This is not a planned video. I <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me or are new here, I'm Annika. I just have wanted to be I've just wanted to do a mental health video for a while and I've been asked to do it a lot because that's something I speak out a lot about on my Instagram. If you don't follow my Instagram, I'll leave it in the description below. It's just at Annika Boren. And I decided to do a mental health video today because it's a random ass day, which means it's the perfect day to talk about mental health because you should talk about mental health whenever you need to talk about it, not just on Bell Let's Talk Day. And that's a day that really frustrates me, not because I don't think it's important, and it's um, a good cause and it has good intentions, but I just don't like it because it's not enough, if that makes sense. I feel like it's just really sad seeing people talk about it for one day and then reaching out to all the people that they know, they know have gone through mental health issues and then kind of sweeping it under the rug. I've done a lot of posts on social media, like Instagram talking about how people are not alone and that um, I've struggled with mental health as well, but I never really open up about exactly what I've dealt with. And that's something I wasn't comfortable with sharing before. And I honestly don't think I'll go into detail. Basically, I just wanted to share kind of quickly my story and give you guys some tips on how to not even be happier, but just to like live life because life isn't always happy. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, um, everyone has their struggles and I've spent a lot of my time being invalidated by people telling me that I'm not allowed to feel upset, that I shouldn't feel upset based on um, the privileges I've had in my life or appearance or personality or circumstances. I've been kind of shut down and, and my feelings have not been valid. I think it's very important for people to realize that there's not a criteria for who has the right to be upset. If that were so, if there was a criteria of who could be sad and who couldn't be, so many people would be completely invalidated and their feelings that would just wouldn't <laughs> it just makes zero sense because then if someone's struggling with a sickness but they have a nice car they're not allowed to be sad i think it's very important to remember that everything is subjective and everything is relative in life so i know very well i am very aware how fortunate i am and that there are people who struggle much more significantly than i am but we are all human and feelings are feelings a life is a life no matter what you're going through no matter who you are you have a right to be sad and everyone has struggles in their life that's just fact everyone has a story so never judge a book by its cover i'm a i'm working on being less judgmental because I've spent some of my life being judgmental and making um, judgments on people before getting to know them. And then I started realizing that people would do that to me and it felt awful to see what people would say about me or to hear things about me coming from people who have no idea who I am, who have never met me, have just seen maybe me on social media or heard about me from a friend or have never met me at all. They just make assumptions about me. And so I, I, I have flaws and I'm working on how to stop judging people. Judgments really fire emotion and I think they really get in the way of human interaction and healthy relationships. So I don't know, especially when it comes to mental health, it's so important to realize that everyone has struggles. Um, so my personally, I'm just gonna be honest because although it is personal, so it's up to someone to decide if they wanna share, I think the stigma is a little, it's, it's noteworthy, the stigma is there. Um, but I am diagnosed with um, anxiety disorder and depression and I have been for so long and I remember the first time I like noticed there was something wrong with my mental health. Well, when I was very young, I've, I've always been the most anxious person ever, um, but depression wise, I started spending a lot of time in bed. Um, I forget when this was, maybe grade nine, 10, I don't know, sometime in high school. And I just started spending a lot of time in bed and I thought it was normal. I thought every teenager didn't really feel the need to get out of bed, didn't really wanna seize the day and do things. I thought that was kind of normal. Um, and I remember my mom just coming into my room one day and just ha had a little chat with me and asked me a few questions. And I said, I I'm just like not happy. It didn't really occur to me that that was weird. I was just like, I'm not, happy i don't feel the need to do anything i don't have any motivation and i used to be the most motivated kid ever i'd be playing multiple competitive sports doing a lot of extracurriculars um and she looked at me and she was like well honey maybe maybe you're depressed and i got so defensive i was like absolutely not do not put that label on me i'm not depressed only weird people are depressed people who are depressed are emo and suicidal and i started crying and i looked at her because i because kids aren't really taught about 
depression. They're taught about what it is, but they're not taught about like the actual how common it is and how realistic it can be. Um, so I started crying and I looked at my mom. I'm like, am I gonna die? I was like, am I gonna kill myself? Cause I literally thought that's what it was. You got diagnosed with depression and then you died. You like, you got so upset. You like couldn't live life. Like it ate your brain up. So I just started panicking and I didn't even know if I had any mental illness at this point. I got, um, an appointment with my doctor and then she sent me to a psychiatrist and then the psychiatrist did uh, an evaluation on me and she diagnosed me with the anxiety which I already kind of knew about and the depression um, and then she put me on meds um, I've been on Prozac for a long time various anxiety meds but I have actually gone off them without telling anyone my doctor's watching what's up but because they gave me really bad nightmares and nightmares are not fun when they're like really bad like <laughs> it was scary like i it was to the point where i didn't really know what was real and what wasn't i'd wake up and i thought different events had happened and i'd not be sure of what people around me had actually done versus what was my dream so i was just like okay enough with those meds but what really changed my life is um therapy i'm very fortunate to go to this therapy it's um called dbt it's a specific type of therapy um dialectic behavioral therapy yeah um and it's basically just learning how to deal with your emotions it has nothing to do um with shutting down your emotions how to be less um emotional because something my therapist has taught me and something that i've learned from my parents is that i am so fortunate to be an emotional sensitive person i think it has so many um positives even though it sucks for me because i feel everything um it also helps me be an empathetic person it helps me with my day-to-day -day life it helps me with social cues so although it sucks and it's very hard and life's unfair and it sucks that i feel everything so much um, it is who I am and I have to accept it and just deal with it in a healthier way than what I had been doing prior, which was anxiety attacks, self-harm, taking it out on those who I love. I just had no control over my emotions and I learned how to, instead of letting my emotions consume me and often shutting them down because I'm known as a happy bubbly person, I thought I had to feel that way. Like that's what, like I wasn't allowed to be upset in front of people. So I'd push my feelings down, which eventually made it worse. Um, I've learned how to, kind of embrace the emotion, learn how to feel the emotion in a healthy way and then self-soothe without having to rely on others for my happiness. And I'm still struggling every single day and uh, I still have days where I don't wanna get out of bed and I still have days where I wanna hide in the bathroom and cry for hours, but I'm learning that I'm human and um, I've learned that although I have struggles, there's nothing wrong with me, I'm human, humans our emotional humans get sad for no reason sometimes we're very complicated creatures and we have to learn how to not beat ourselves up and accept our not even flaws but just our feelings and accept that there's nothing wrong with them as long as we deal with them in a healthy way and life is a series of kicks in the fucking junk and life's gonna suck and you just have to learn how to get stronger from each of those my brain has a way of making everything feel like the end of the world i always remember this too shall pass that helps me so much um because even when f things feel like they will never pass i promise that's like the one thing i can tell you is that they will even the good things i just want to encourage everyone to kind of be there for each other and reach out for help but also i think the most important thing is for those who are struggling with it and everyone struggles with mental problems extreme emotions um you have to help yourself and you have to make the decision to help yourself and going through life in a healthy manner takes effort and you're not always going to be happy and you have to accept that you have to help yourself and you have to put in effort and it's so hard um i don't like going to therapy full time i don't like going to therapy twice a week it's really hard it's really emotionally exhausting honestly physically exhausting because anxiety takes over the whole body so it is sadness depression um, but it's something that I know I have to do. I have to do it for myself. I have to help myself because if I don't, I hurt myself and I hurt those around me. It's, there's nothing more heartbreaking than seeing a father or a mother be so sad over you. Like my dad says he can't sleep at night sometimes. And like, for me, that's what even motivates me more. I know that sounds bad, but that's what motivates me to get better even more than my own sadness. Cause I'd always rather see 
myself go through pain than see someone I love go through pain. And I've realized that when I go through pain, I automatically make someone I love go through pain. So it's not fair for my family, for my boyfriend, for my sister, um, for my friends who have been there for me always to kind of stay in that depressive state because although it's chemical imbalance and sometimes you need medication help and you need professional help, that's often the case, that's what I need. I, at least I took those steps and some people aren't fortunate enough to take those steps. Um, I'm very aware how fortunate I am to have a family that supports me and is willing to fund the therapy needed. But I think it's so important to, if you don't have those funds, reach out and try to take the steps towards getting that help. I'm probably gonna wrap this video up. I'm scared it's gonna be really long and I don't wanna ramble for so long. <laughs> um, I don't know, I don't really know the purpose of this video. I guess it was just kinda to open up to you guys. Hopefully you got to know me a little more and just learn to like not judge a book by its cover. Um, social media, it's so important to realize that social media is just the best side that people put out and often people post to cover up their insecurities. I'm okay, like you guys don't need to. <laughs> I'll always go through hard times, but I've learned recently that I'll always come through and I'll always be okay. And I want you guys to know that too. We're all in this together. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. Um, subscribe for more videos if you haven't already. And thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you on a more upbeat video and comment down below videos you want me to do.